The Houston Texans defense take another blow as Denzel Perriman has been suspended for three games. Cody and I take a look at how that will impact this defense moving forward. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, 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 welcome everybody to this Wednesday's episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, of course. I'm John, some sports guy, Hickman, your Texans football analyst, joining the show as always, Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own Cody Davis. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Thank you to all of our new listeners. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texas podcast wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And for all of our returning listeners, lending your ear for another episode. Thank you for coming back as we continue to talk Texans. How important is it for Texans fans to show out at the NRG Stadium mm. against the Arizona Cardinals this Sunday? That's important. Your franchise quarterback is basically putting the Batman beam up in the sky. I want mm. everybody out, out at home. Uh, ranking Nick Casario. Is he top five? We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll be kicking off today's show looking at how Denzel Perriman's suspension uh, who was suspended for three games due to that hit on I uh, forgot what player it was, but the due, due to the hit on Sunday, that was his seventh helmet to helmet hit. The NFL has suspended him for three games. Cody, before I pass it over to you, this is something that I tweeted a while back about the Texans linebacking group. This is back in September. I was still concerned with the linebacker group. If you guys are not able to watch it at home, if you're listening, the tweets are as followed. Still concerned with the linebacker group for Houston, and I probably will be for the entirety of the season. And I also tweeted, and another thing, Houston hmm. needs to upgrade their linebacker room ASAP. And the reason for those tweets and that comment was simply because if something happened, if, if a guy went down or if an injury happened, then Houston was going to be very thin at that position. And they are. Henry Toto. Tied with Blake Cashman with the most tackles on the team. So you got Henry and Blake Cashman on that depth chart right now for the linebacker position. But then you have Corey Littleton, who has played less than 3% of the defensive snaps. Jake Hansen, who has played in less than 2% of the defensive snaps. And Neville Hewitt, who has played in 0% of the defensive snaps. Um. Denzel Perriman was suspended three games due to repeated violation of playing rules to protect the health and safety of the players. That hit that you're referring to um, actually came in the fourth quarter against Jamar Chase. That was his, I believe, second um, violation of the season. But the one thing seven. that I didn't know, it was the second of the season, but seven over the mm -hmm. last two years. And that's what I did not like about this because I look at this from a standpoint, okay, if this is something that the league kept notifying you going all the way back to, I believe, the 2021 season or 2022, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. To me, it just seems like you should have a clean slate at the start of the next season. However, John, I know a lot of people might be a little bit concerned about the absence of Denzel Perriman. I have my concerns, too. However, I believe that Perriman's suspension came at the best time because look he's suspended as we just said for three games here are and he the will appeal by the way i think he appealed yesterday oh well ho hopefully he could come back but without a shadow of a doubt i definitely believe he's not going to play on sunday but here are the three games that denzel perriman is going to be out for the arizona cardinals jacksonville jaguars the denver broncos here are the three quarterbacks that denzel perriman will not face kyle murray Trevor Lawrence and Russell Wilson. And we have came on this show on several, several different occasions and said Denzel Perriman is not 
at his best as a linebacker who can excel in pass coverage. As a matter of fact, according to Pro Football Focus, he has a pass coverage grade of 30.5, one of the lowest on the team. Also, you got to keep in mind, these three games will give Perriman an opportunity to get healthy because as solid as he has been throughout this whole entire season up until this point, he has been battling a couple injuries. Remember, I believe he had missed, I believe it was like two or three games with the hand injury. He came back with the club on his hand. Um, this is just going to give him an opportunity to go out there and get healthy. However, once he comes back, back fresh and energized, that's going to leave him available for the next five games of the season. And here are the final games that Denzel Perryman will be available for. The New York Jets, the Tennessee Titans twice, the Cleveland Browns, and you close out with the Indianapolis Colts. Why is that important? Because here are the running backs that Denzel Perryman will face. I'm not going to include Dalvin Cooks in the Jets too much, but Tennessee Titans means you have Derrick Henry twice. The Cleveland Browns, you have... Kareem Hunt and Jerome Ford, who is leading that team with 532 rushing attacks at that time. And of course, you close out with Jonathan Taylor, one of still one of the best five running backs in the league. Why is that important? Because Denzel Perriman is one of the best run stopper that this team has on the defensive side of the ball. As a matter of fact, according to Pro Football Focus, he has a run defenses grade of 71. Point seven, which makes him, like I just mentioned, one of the best run stopper that this team has. So I understand from depth purposes, it might be a little bit concerning. However, knowing that this has been a season where Perriman has dealt with, if not a major injury to keep him on the sideline, a couple of knickknack injuries that, that, you know, where he appeared on a practice of on the practice report, where he might've been limited at practice or, you know, just something that he might've just had to play through, get healthy, we all know that this team is getting ready, if not they are already in a prime position to make a playoff run. Four of your last five games are coming against teams that rely heavily upon the run. You are one of their best run stoppers. Get healthy. I understand you might be a little bit frustrated, but get healthy, and that way you can give this defense a boost for those last five games. I disagree with you on that. First of all, this is a team that I believe needs all hands on deck. Now, when Perriman doesn't play, Houston is 3-0 compared to 2-4 and four when he's on the field. Uh, but this team, if they're going to make a run at the playoff, which we've all talked about how that's a real possibility, they're going to need all hands on deck for them to make it to the playoffs. And that's plain and simple in my eyes. Now, you mentioned how the next three teams that Houston plays, you potentially potentially be out for. Arizona, Denver, and Jacksonville, how they're not relying heavily on the run. Arizona is ninth right now in, in rushing yards per game. Denver is 12th right now in rushing yards per game. 117 for Denver, uh, 126, basically 127 for, for uh, Arizona. And the Jags are 15th right now in rushing yards per game with 106. Nine TDs on the ground for the Jags. Denver only does have one touchdown on the ground, but Arizona, you look at the Arizona Cardinals, they have uh, nine TDs on the ground. Then you also look at the fact that Sunday's matchup is featuring a Kyler Murray who is exciting to be back, excited to be back on the field, and he also had an opportunity to scramble around on Sunday to do oh. that. Kyler Murray looked like a little kid running around with a you know, you know at a birthday party unhinged type of run. So the, the numbers do show that the next three teams, they find ways to run the ball. I mean, yeah, they find ways to run the ball, but at the same time, you know that's not what they're going to depend on. And I will be careful looking at the numbers for the Arizona Cardinals because majority of that, if not all, Kyler Murray wasn't playing. He literally just made his season debut. Yeah, and, well, know, I know, once he gets with, started, without, without they're Kyler going Murray, to – they were ninth in the NFL in rushing I know, yards. but now you have Kyler Murray, your, yeah, your quote-unquote franchise quarterback. So, so you, you're not going to rely too much on a run like you did at the start of the season. But with Kyler Murray, you, you can't discredit what he does with his legs. That's a part of his game. That's like if you go up against a Lamar Jackson, if you go up against 
you know, prime uh, a prime Cam Newton. If you go up and up against a, a, a Josh Allen, you have to still account for their legs. And with Kyler Murray back, and he's full go right now, he's going to play his game. And he played his game Sunday, so that's another guy that you have to account for when you look at picking up yards on the ground. And they're going to have a tough, I think a tough difficult, a tough assignment Sunday to make sure that they contain Kyler Murray. So I think that with Houston's limitations at linebacker already, right, uh, relying on a rookie linebacker, Henry Toto, who was out last game with an injury, Christian Harris I'm okay with relying on based, based off his last two games. Blake Cashman, we all are okay with relying on Blake Cashman. But you got to like rely, rely on Corey Littleton. Hasn't played a lick of downs for Houston. Uh, for the most part. Got to rely on Neville Houston. No snaps defensively. Jake Hansen, you know, less than 2%. Corey Littleton, less than 3%. That's difficult when you're putting guys on the field now that hasn't had opportunities, and in Neville Hewitt's case, no opportunity off of, I mean, outside of uh, special teams to get on the field. That's an issue at a position that was already less than dynamic, at a position that was already – that came into the season with question marks in my eyes at a thin position. The NFL suspending Denzel Perriman for that hit, I think, is wrong. And for Houston, it's really going to hurt him, I believe, because of the depth, the lack thereof at that position. And again, we can look ahead to the, the Colts, we can look ahead to the Titans. But as of right now, Arizona's ninth in the league in Russia, Denver is 12th in the league in Russia, Jags. Are 15 all top 15 teams that run the ball and without Denzel Perriman, as you put it, our best run stopper, uh, if not him, then Blake Cashman probably uh, at the linebacker position. Uh, without him, then I can see that being a problem for Houston. I don't know. Look, I don't want to diminish the loss of Denzel Perriman, but I'm just looking at this like how Coach D'Amico Ryan's been saying throughout the whole entire season you got to look at your opponents, and if this is a situation where he's going to miss. Three games. I would much rather him miss these next three games other than one, three of the last five when you were going up against some of the best running backs in the league, especially Derrick Henry, who I know he, he hasn't been King Henry as much this season, but that is still a guy that this defense in the past has had trouble stopping. So we shall see. Hopefully he'll be back at least by the Denver Broncos game, but I do agree with, with one thing that you said, John. Um, I don't agree with this suspension, especially like I mentioned. Yes, this is your seventh offense, but only the second and third of the season. And you have to go all the way back to the 2000, either 21 or 22 campaign to truly set your suspension. To use Denzel Perriman as an example versus just going by the facts of what's been laid out as of right now this season. D'Amico Ryan said on the Pat McAfee show, uh, that he's spoken with Denzel. It's a tough conversation, and he knows it. We hate to lose a good player. He's the starting linebacker for us. We'll just let the process play out. It's real hard news to hear, but we'll have our guys, our young guys, stepping up and ready to go. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job on LinkedIn.com, then add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and higher. This is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Score early and often this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get a 100, $150 
credit and bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 back if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, then there's always time to hop in on the action right now. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and hop into the action of the NFL season, the NBA season, college basketball, football season. Right now, FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. Um, And then... <laughs> You know, before we take any questions, quite frankly, I'm almost embarrassed that I have to say anything. Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio and the Wolf of Wall Street, but uh, I'm not leaving. Um, there's never really been any substantive discussions of the sort. Uh, grateful and appreciative of the opportunity um, that my family and I have here in Houston. Um, we understood when we when we arrived, when we got here, that there was a lot of work to be done. And I think when you look across the NFL landscape, there's work to be done in every organization. And I think we've made some progress where we still have a lot of work in front of us. Um, certainly, it's been a joy to work with D'Amico um, in concert as we build uh, the team and continue to build the staff. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think this time of year, there's a lot of information um, and a lot of topics that are discussed. Um, some are more accurate than others, and I think it uh, transcends multiple landscapes. Um, but I can't, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm almost embarrassed that I have to say anything, but I feel like I have an obligation to, <laughs> to make that statement, uh, really try to stay ahead of it. I'm, it really, I mean, I don't think there's anything else to talk about or to say or any question about it. Um, again, Appreciative of the opportunity that we have here. Very grateful. Um, and my philosophy and goal is just try to do the best job that I can for the people in this organization, in this building, um, for the city. Um, and as long as ownership uh, approves of what we're trying to do, then, you know, certainly their support um, is welcomed. Um, so having said that, you know, we'll take some questions here um, and go from there. That was Nick Casario, seven days before the 2023 NFL Draft. And the only reason why I played that clip was because, John, you remember? There was some, quote-unquote, rumors going around saying that. Speculations. Some mm, questionable reporting saying that Casario was going to leave the Texans and head back to the New England Patriots after the draft. We called BS on that show when it first happened. Nick Casario downplayed the rumors. And here we are, what, about 10 months since the draft. Texans are 5-4. and four. About, about 7. About 7 months since the draft. Texans are 5-4. and four. CJ Stroud is MVP caliber. You take a look wrapped at the up rookie of the year. Yeah, wrapped up rookie. He did that after that. After beating, what was that? The Steelers, I want to say, in week three. But uh, no, the Jags. Jags in week three. You went out there, made a very risky but rewardable trade in Will Anderson. You went out and had a finally had a real opportunity to sign very important and key veterans to your team. And here we are. I wouldn't necessarily call this phase two of a rebuild. I would say mm. you're not knocking on the door of phase three because the success that we have seen this organization have so far this year showcased the importance of Nick Casario. John, I know this is something that you really wanted to talk to, but I do want to mention this as well. What we are seeing out of Nick Casario, I understand this is year three for him, and we all know that the first two years was very Rocky, very questionable at times for that man. However, once you got the hiring of Coach D'Amico Ryan's right, we finally, I can finally say at least, that this was the real first year of Nick Casario as the general manager. And I say true first year only because, only because this was the very first year where he had an opportunity to build, reshape, and make hirings no, without, no, 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 without, all of the shenanigans 
and foolishness that was going on with this organization. Yes, Nick Casario walked in and got hired, what was it, like January or February of 2021. And we know for the next two years, this organization has went through a gauntlet of mess. Now, you finally had an opportunity to clean all of that out of the building, and now we are getting a sense of what Nick Casario can do as a general manager. But is he top five? Top five? Is he th so the conversation, this topic was brought up, and I think this is a good midday, you know, a midweek type of topic because we have our crossover tomorrow, and then Cody and I will close out our thoughts on how Houston can win Sunday, and by the way, if there's any game that I think is a Will Anderson game, it's this game, uh, especially now that Kyler Murray is back. That's why I say that. But is he a top five general manager? We had to call in an unexpected call for Tuesday show. And was that Tuesday show? It was Tuesday mm -hmm. show. And, you know, got a call. My buddy says, I just want to say Nick Casario is a top five general manager in the NFL. Out of 32 teams, he's top five. Is he top five? Yes or no? I can't give him top five right Cannot now. Cannot give him top five. And, that, and, and I think <laughs> Nick Casario has done a good job this year, right? We go back to his free agent signings for this year. Sheldon Rankins just had a monster game. Uh, working the contract situation out with Steven Nelson. That's big. Uh, Denzel Perriman, who has been good for Houston in the ways he's been good for Houston. That's big. Uh, Shaq Griffin, that was a good pickup for Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, George Fant turned out to be a good pickup for Houston. Hmm. Uh, all of those left guards and centers that they brought in due to the injuries, each one of them performed fairly well when they stepped in until they got hurt went out. Kendrick Green being maybe the one that I liked the most. Those are good pickups for Houston. Noah Brown, good pickup for Houston. But to say top five, it's just not happening. It's just not <laughs> happening. And, Cody, you say that this is the first real year. I'm always going to look at 2022 because that was the first time you were able to reap the benefits of the Deshaun Watson trade. Mm -hmm. And of that draft, oh, Lord. Derek Stingley has missed a handful of games. Keen Green has not only missed a handful of games, but he's now missed an entire season. And the progression that we've wanted to see from that young man isn't there. Jalen Petrie. Jalen Petrie. I want to say seven picks were traded for both Christian Harris and John Mechie. Mm -hmm. And to this point, the amount of picks that were traded for those young players hasn't necessarily seen the return on that investment, though they've been good in spurts, not consistent in being good. In John Mitchell's case, it's different. And I'm not talking about anything outside of playing football. I'm talking about on the field. By the way, I do want to mention that John Mitchell has only dropped one pass this year. Uh -huh. So he's been efficient for Houston. Christian Harris has had his moments, but... For the seven picks, the investment has not been seen yet on the field. Hasn't returned on the field. Thomas Booker was also drafted. Tegan Quintoriano was also, also drafted in that 2022 draft. And I think Thomas Booker may be the one that still makes everybody scratch their head. Yeah, I know it did when he was drafted here to Houston. Got it right this year on this year's draft. Some of the free agent moves and decisions that he's made, because we always go back and forth, the signing of Anthony Miller, they're letting him go. The front office does a job of repeatedly signing players and cutting players and practice squad the same players. Mm -hmm. Derek Rivers, I hope he has an apartment here in Houston, because I don't know how many times we're going to move on from you. But you know what? Hold on. We're going to bring you back. That happened this year. But out of all 32 teams, and this is not me hating on Nick Casario, because I'm the first to say, I will be the first to like, Eat my own words. He's done a great job. Though the question of how does CJ Stroud get to Houston will always be in question. Was it the ownership? Was it the McNair's? Was it was it CJ? Was it that's always in question? Decided to trade up for Will Anderson to this point, I think was a good idea. And he did do a very good job of this year's draft. Also helped building a coaching staff, which I think goes under under the radar when discussing what 
Nick Casillo has done this year. But guys, y'all gonna hate me for this. I'm not putting them over Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones out of Dallas. I'm not doing it. I'm not putting them over Howie Roseman. I think maybe the best GM in the league, in Philly. I'm not putting them over right now with the Miami Dolphins has been able to do that build that roster up over the last couple of years. So that's three. A lot of people are going to hate me for the next statement. Outside of the trading for the quarterback, what the Cleveland Browns have done to build that roster up is phenomenal. So that GM up in up in Cleveland. Also, Seattle has done a very good job post Russell Wilson, post their franchise quarterback. The job that the GM in Seattle has done has been awesome. And, of course, we know about John Lynch and the San Francisco 49ers. So that's at mm-hmm. least six GMs right there that I think if you look at their track record and what they've done to build the team up, build in you know, talent, bring in talent, those GMs, I think, are over Nick Casario. And I also want to mention number eight, or number seven for me, the Detroit Lions GM. Uh, mm-hmm. They built and put together a very great roster. They've drafted well. And thankfully, the Jacksonville Jaguars were just, I don't, <laughs> I'll call them idiots for drafting. Uh, <laughs> drafting uh, our old boy out of Trayvon Walker over Aiden Hutchinson and Kevon Thibodeau last year. Like, we look at blessings That's in wild. disguise. Them mm-hmm. passing up on those two guys were great for Houston. So that's at least seven teams that I think right now have better general managers than Houston. But I will say that Nick Casario has improved a lot with the help that he's been able to get and being able to put together a very good underrated coaching staff um, for the Houston Texans. Uh, I agree with you, but here's the only catch. The seven teams, the seven general managers that you name, all of them has built sustainable success over the course of time. Nick Casario, whether you look at him, let's say winning loss records for three years, whether you look at him as 0-1, 1-1, or 1-2, this was literally the very first year, regardless of how you look at it, where Nick Casario put together a great team and a great coaching staff. Now, the next question is, can he do it again? Now that you have your coach, you have your franchise quarterback, you have solid foundational pieces without a shadow of a doubt, Can you now plug in those voids so where we won't have conversations as to, okay, you lose this player in this position group, but you had an opportunity to add depth to it. You know, you look at the wide receiving core. Yes, it's been good, but how can you improve? Now it's like, okay, the issue that Nick Casario is going to have next year is sustainability. sustainability. That's exactly where I was going with this. And I say, maybe if you give it the next two or three years, then you're looking at a situation where you can definitely say Nick Asario is a top five general manager. And of course, a lot of that continues to, to, to lean upon and rely upon the success of this team, but he is definitely on the right track. Yeah. I, I, and, and I think that's what's fair to say. He's gotten on the right track. Mm-hmm. Dalton Schultz has been he, like, every, every, we, we, oh, we just wow, the free agent, the, the free agency <laughs> this year, the coaching staff this year, the draft this year, and navigating, pivoting through injuries this year, that has put Nick Casario, I think, a light on him, a positive light on him. And now people are starting to notice some of the things that he's been doing. And I think of all, all of the things that Nick Casario has done this year, pivoting through that offensive line injury mm. bug was probably the best. I mean, you know, if Kendrick Green don't go down, this is a different offensive line because he was playing good for Houston. Kendrick Green, not Keon Green, who's on IR. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the left guard issue, the center issues. He did a very good job that I need to applaud him for. We all need to applaud him for for navigating and pivoting through the offensive line injuries and those woes. But right now, he's still not top five because there are some general managers. And I think of all of the GMs, I probably love what the Detroit Lions GM has done the most because you talk about a poverty franchise that franchise has been cursed since <laughs> Barry Sanders said you know what I'm done with y'all and 
they he's that that GM and that front office has got them looking like a real playoff team in the NFC. Um, so Casario got a ways to go. I don't even think he has a ways to go. He just needs to be consistent. And once he does that, I think the narrative around whether or not he's a top five general manager will change. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Simply the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from special leagues, a league created to specifically combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of threes made plus receptions. Uh, I'm going to take the under on that because I don't think LeBron James is going to put up that many three points made. So yeah, you may want to take that same advice. You can now find the community plays under promo tabs of the app to tap of the app to view the entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Prize picks even offers a re- reboot policy so that if your entry player gets hurt for football or basketball, you now have the opportunity to get that player rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to prizepicks.com or pull up the app on your phone. Use promo code locked on for a first time deposit match up to $100. Welcome back, locked on Texans listeners and viewers. Before we close out today's show, Cody, where will you and myself be Sunday? Inside NRG Stadium. We'll be looking up top the press down box. below in the press box. Last time I was there, and Cody, you, you, I'm still jealous about not being able to be at that Bucks game. By the way, you had an important reason, which was a better reason. I had an important reason, and <laughs> since that reason, the Rockets nor the Texans have lost a game. What are they like seven and oh now? What is that? I, I think. After Sunday, eight no. The Rockets ain't have no. a six game winning streak. <laughs> the Houston had the Texas have a two game winning streak. And so hopefully Sunday they'll be able to push it further to go three in a row, which a lot of us believe that they will be able to do. But how important is it for fans to fill up the NRG stadium and show out Sunday? This is something that CJ talked about following the win against Cincinnati on Sunday. And this is also something that Coach D'Amico Ryan's reiterated Monday. Our fans drive the energy in our stadium. So anytime we can have our stadium sold out and our fans are loud, just as as the end of that Tampa Bay game, when they were loud, right, it affected the offense, right? Our fans can truly affect the game by showing up, being loud, right, being rowdy and causing chaos for the opposing uh, for the opposing offenses. So, I mean, we love our fans to show up and show out as CJ asked asked them to yesterday. It's uh, definitely a benefit to us, and it'd be a benefit to them helping us and getting a win by being as loud as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I believe I started this campaign the week they played against the New Orleans Saints. It's time for you to show out and show up for your football team. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Um, I understood. Look, look. CJ and Costa Mico Ryan's both say they want to see a, a, a sellout. And we're not talking about a sellout like last year where they came close to a sellout in that game against Kansas City. But I believe about 75% of the fans inside NRG Stadium was for Kansas City. That was disrespectful. No, we understand it's been a long, long time for you to finally trust, support, and love this team. You've been through a gauntlet. Like, I don't think not too many fan base has been through, but. It's time for you to start believing again on Sunday. Come out and support your Houston Texans. Fill up NRG Stadium. We are in the middle of a playoff run. Come on, man. Come Something on. that hasn't been said <laughs> in quite a, quite a Since while. 2019. Yeah. Hey, before we close out, I think this is something we should discuss at some point this week. 
This is a comment that was on YouTube, and I and I really find this interesting. What do y'all think of Jalen Petrie's play over the over this season so far? Let's come back to that. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts, whether you watch or listen. Uh, give me a follow on Twitter slash X at John underscore Hickman 12. And yeah, man, let's talk about Jalen Petrie. Hmm. Let's talk about Jalen Petrie. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.